Although known mostly for playing Fender guitars, Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain also played many Univox high flyers. And these Univox high flyers were actually Japanese copies of higher end Moserite guitars. Kurt owned two authentic Moserites. The most famous, a Sunburst Gospel model, although fairly short lived, has played a significant role in Nirvana's history, as there is evidence to suggest it was used to some degree to record the band's second album, Nevermind. Kurt's second Moserite, a Blue model, was damaged in 1991 at his Los Angeles apartment in the Fairfax district after it had flooded out. Eventually, the electronics were repaired and it was played by guitar tech Big John Duncan at the Roseland Ballroom Show in 1993 and later played by Pat Smear during their second Saturday Night Live appearance. That Saturday Night Live appearance, apart from its rehearsal, was Pat Smear's first show with the band. Moserite was an American guitar company started in 1956 by Semi Mosley with an investment from Reverend Ray Boatwright. The name Moserite is a combination of both their names. Semi was a guitar maker who previously worked for Rickenbacker and mastered the art of the German curve body style. When they began, their production was all custom handmade guitars and many aspects remained that way throughout their run. Moserite guitars became known as the most sought after boutique guitars in the world. Thanks to artists like Joe Mathis and the surf band The Ventures, the company was finally able to mass produce guitars. They were double the price of a Fender Stratocaster. The classic Moserite pickup is a single coil with exposed pole pieces which are really high output. They have a great clean sound and they can really drive an overdriven amplifier. Gospel was often a name that the company associated with Moserite guitars that were sometimes given away to churches, although it was used during Moserite's bankruptcy period when they could not legally use the Moserite name from 1969 to 1970. Kurt's Moserite Gospel was one of these guitars. Kurt's guitar was a right-handed sunburst gospel with a white pickguard and a Bigsby tremolo. The headstock read only gospel with a circle containing a cross. It was void of any fret markings, so Kurt made small dart markings with whiteout. Since Kurt was left-handed, the bridge and nut were flipped, and the strap button was moved so he could play it. The Bigsby spring was removed and replaced with a wood screw. Kurt's Moserite is widely incorrectly cited as being a Mark IV model, as in the Roman numerals IV, mostly due to information from the website Kurt's Equipment, which supposedly references a quote from Ernie Bailey, who referred to it as one. However, Moserite has never had a Mark IV model, at least not in the period while founder Semi Mosley was alive. According to a 2012 video by Dana Mosley, when her dad Semi died in 1992, all of the remaining pieces were destroyed. She states, in 1994, Moserite guitar name was sold to the Fillmore Company out of Japan. In 2008, Fillmore offered her back a partnership, and she herself began hand-assembling Moserites along with building the pickups in Bakersfield, California. Thanks to some help from a man named Fred who claimed to have been the one who bought Curse Moserite in a pawn shop for $100 and stated the serial number was number B1697, we now have some clarity about the specific model based on a website Hang10 which has an unofficial Moserite guitar registry from about 1968 to 1969, serial numbers B1544 to B1687, there was no model name on the headstock, so those are just referred to as Mark V models. From B1689 to B1700 are all the known gospel variants, but since not all of them surfaced and present in the registry, it's not certain if they all are gospels. But Kurt's Moserite having the serial number B1697 falls within this range. So based on this, Kurt's Gospel was likely made around 1969 during their bankruptcy period. When the guitar was auctioned off by Heritage Auctions on 4-17-2004, the description included a quote alleged to come from Ernie Bailey, Kurt's guitar tech and longtime friend of the band that they found on a website called KurtsEquipment.com. It stated, quote, According to Ernie, Kurt had only one gospel, and this is a beyond rare guitar. At the time Kurt died, I was secretly working with Loretta Mosley to build Kurt a lefty gospel in some cool color. Unfortunately, Kurt passed away as Ernie was gathering photos to send to Mosley of Kurt's original. Loretta sent me a nice letter after it ended, as she had recently lost Semi, her husband, the founder of Mosley, and was now running Mosley on her own. 
She had sent me some sales literature of another gospel, but could find no history of ever having made one based on a Mark IV guitar. Kurt's gospel had a letter from Mosray with it that was written to the person it was built for. In 1990, from May through August, Nirvana had a break in touring. Although I couldn't find a current source, it is believed by some that Kurt's Mosray was purchased by Kurt from Real Guitars in San Francisco, California in August of 1990. If that is correct, it may have been around August 13th of 1990, the day where Kurt and Chris were in San Francisco and attended a Scream concert at the I-Beam where they saw Dave Grohl playing drums. In August of 1990, Dale Crover of the Melvins filled in, replacing Chad Channing, who exited in May of 1990, shortly after the Smart Studios recording sessions. The Smart Sessions were originally purposed to be an EP or their second album on Sub Pop, but ended up being part of their demo that they used to shop around to get a major label contract. Dale Crover filled in on drums on Nirvana's 7-day American West Coast tour with Sonic Youth, in which Kurt's Sunburst Moserate Gospel was prominently used. Kurt's Moserate Gospel was first used on August 17th of 1990 at the Hollywood Palladium in Hollywood, California. Prior to this show, Kurt seemed to be favoring his Area Pro 2 guitar. The last show with Dale Crover was on August 25th of 1990 at the New York Theater in Vancouver, Canada. On September 22nd, 1990, Nirvana played at the Motorsports International Garage in Seattle, which was the only show with Dan Peters of the band Mud Honey on drums. Peters previously drummed for them during the Sliver recording sessions that took place in July of 1990. Dave Grohl was in the audience at this show. In addition to the Moserite usage, this show is notable for Kurt smashing up his Area Pro 2 at the end of the show. In just a few weeks, on October 11th of 1990, at the North Shore Surf Club in Olympia, Washington, Dave Grohl would make his debut drumming for the band. After that, Nirvana headed out overseas to the UK with the Moserite. On October 24th, 1990, at the Astoria Theatre in London, Kurt not only used the Moserite, but also a new white Japanese Strat, which is now currently referred to as the K Record Strat, after the prominent K Record sticker on the body. After this show, starting on October 25th, 1990, and continuing until the end of the six-show UK tour, Kurt seems to heavily favor the white K Record Strat, as that is the one which dominates all of the photographs and videos that are available. Some sources claim the last recorded use of the Moserite was on February 9th of 1991 at the Mushroom in Olympia, Washington. On January 18th, 1991, back in the States at a show in Olympia, Washington, Kurt used the white K-Strat and then switched to a red Memphis Strat at the end for some destruction. On March 5th through March 8th, 1991, they played three shows in Canada where Kurt used the white K-Strat as well as a new black Japanese Strat modified with an angled humbucker. This strat is commonly known as the Nevermind strat or the Tunematic strat after the unique bridge modification it eventually received after Kurt smashed it in the studio while recording Endless Nameless from the Nevermind album. The April 17th show in Seattle at OK Hotel is claimed by some to be the last use of the K strat. The Nevermind recording sessions at Sound Studio were held between May 2nd and May 28th in Van Nuys, California. And just one day after they finished, on May 29th of 1991, at a small club called Jabberjaw in Los Angeles, the one commonly seen photo does appear to show a small bit of a white body, so in fact this may have actually been the last appearance of the white case strat. So although not documented, it is possible that the white case strat could have been used on the Nevermind album, as this guitar was clearly one of Kurt's favorites at the time. Kurt Cobain's journals, a collection of his writings, were released in November of 2002. Within it contains an account where Kurt stated three guitars, including the Moserite, have been taken from him. Since the Moserite and the White K Strat were never seen again after this, we may be safe to assume that these guitars were two of those three. I can place the date when the guitars went missing based on an interview transcript found on the website Live Nirvana. The transcript is from an interview from September 18th of 1991 done by Paul Kimball in Tacoma, Washington with Kurt and Chris. The interviewer asked about last spring, and Kurt mentions they recorded a record last spring, and talks about how you can rent a furnished apartment in L.A. for a month. Then Kurt says, Fits of Depression booked a tour and came down and stayed with us for a few days. We had to have a Fits of Depression show to get him back home. Then Chris says, Yeah, and we got all of our guitars stolen. So based on this, we may conclude that the Moserite was stolen directly after they finished recording Nevermind. 
In a 2023 interview, producer and YouTuber Rick Beato published a great interview with Nevermind producer Butch Vig, where he states, And we got to the end of the one of the takes, and they didn't even finish the end. Kurt just said, stop, stop, stop. He goes, I, I, this doesn't feel right to me. And then he launched into Endless Nameless. Okay. And I've never seen so much rage on a person's face. Like, it was scary. And you were still rolling the tape. We were rolling the tape. Yeah. And they launched into that song. At the end, Kurt completely smashed his guitar, blew his voice out. And I think he was, on that particular take, he was playing his left-handed Mo's right. However, since the Mo's right was a right-handed guitar flipped, and the insert of Nevermind album shows a smashed Stratocaster, it seems he was mistaken which guitar was actually smashed. He also stated Kurt had backup guitars, one being a jazz master, but maybe he has that confused with Kurt's Sunburst Jaguar. After all, it was 30 years ago. That was a long time ago. Also, we still have the possibility of the other black strat, commonly referred to as the Vandalism strat, as if that appeared in June of 1991, before the famous sticker was added. The current owner of Kurt Cobain's Light Moserate Gospel is unknown, although it has been on display at EMP Mopop Museum in Seattle. Alright, that's going to do it for this one. Don't forget to throw me a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Peace.